Welcome to Ogus Training. Ogus is an integrated training platform for upstream oil and gas sector. By the end of this presentation you will get an overview of the oil and gas business and the oil and gas value chain. Our modern civilization today is energy intensive. We need a lot of energy, just to survive. Be it our cars running on petrol and diesel, aeroplanes flying on aviation turbine fuel or our homes, offices, supermarkets, hospitals and schools running on electricity, you see energy is at work everywhere. This graph, which was produced by BP in 2015, shows global energy consumption and also the share of oil and gas to the global energy sector, from 1965 to 2014. You can see that the energy usage is growing at a faster and faster rate with every passing year. The percentage share of oil and gas, however, remains almost constant, with the share of gas increasing and share of oil decreasing slowly. In fact, the percentage share of coal is reducing, whereas the renewables start catching up a sizable market share from early 2000. This slide shows you the share of oil and gas in global energy consumption in 2019. You can see that oil and gas together contributes to a staggering 57% of total global energy consumption, and the next candidate, coal, is just 27%. All these data goes to show the importance of the oil and gas business for the global economy. This data has been taken from BP Statistical Review 2020. Here is the future projection of global energy usage, by energy source. You can see that the contribution of natural gas, one of the cleanest energy sources available today, is projected to increase, along with a big leap in renewables, whereas the coal and even oil is going to see constant figures which means a percentage decrease. But even in 2040, oil and gas together will constitute almost half of total global energy consumption. Contrary to the common belief that oil and gas is used as an energy source alone, oil and natural gas have a lot of other uses. Other than different types of fuels, which is of course the major use, oil and gas also acts as feedstock for different industries for our everyday life, like fertilizers, paints and dyes, chemicals, electronics, clothing, plastics and polymers, pharmaceuticals and many more. The oil and gas business is broadly classified under three sectors. The seismic data acquisition of a prospective field, appraisal, drilling of wells and discovery of a field, field development, ultimately producing the oil and gas from the field and maintaining the field comes under the upstream sector. The midstream sector comprises of transmission of the oil and gas to the refineries and other consumers. The transmission may be through sea, tankers, rail, or by pipelines which may be hundreds of kilometers in length. The downstream sector comprises of refineries, distribution, retail and marketing of oil and gas products, also the petrochemical companies. Here you can see the upstream sector value chain, with the indicative timelines for each stage of development of a field. These timelines can be very long for conventional assets, whereas for unconventional assets like shale oil or coal bed methane, the timeline can be considerably lowered due to active government interest and involvement leading to fast development of the field. The first activity is to access the field, which means to identify the basin or fields of interest, negotiate with the government to obtain rights and secure the license to develop and operate the field. Then the companies proceed to conduct geological and seismic studies and drill the first exploratory well. Based on the results from these studies and exploration, the appraisal wells are drilled to project the hydrocarbon in place in the reservoir. The next step is to do the engineering work like front-end engineering design and then to construct the facilities, also development wells are drilled. Then the field will actually pass on to its production and maintenance phase where the company will actually monetize the hydrocarbons under the ground and will manage the field to maximize the recovery of the oil and gas in place. At the end of the contract, the company is legally obliged to abandon the field in a safe and secure manner. The upstream business is immensely complex and very technology and capital intensive. The companies involved have to do huge upfront investment without any reliable projection of the return which itself is a big risk. Moreover it is highly regulated by the governments and is considered as one of the core industries of a nation for energy security. It needs highly trained and skilled manpower, with a lot of service companies involved in each phase of the value chain. Nowadays there is a lot of focus on safety and environment, both on the part of the companies and the government regulating bodies. In out next video we will discuss about the origin of oil and gas and about the basics of the oil and gas reservoirs. We hope you liked this video, do leave your comments and subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos.